sensible amount, isn't it? Um, you're listening to BBC Radio Shops. It's Michaela Wall with you this evening. Now, Salton Hall is an ancient English manor near Wem. They hold many events in and around the grounds, including outdoor theatre, art exhibitions, um, exciting Christmas event also that we're going to find out about. Tim Ashton is from Salton Hall and is joined by Reverend Deborah Walton to tell us more about their Christmas carol. Um, so first, Tim, tell us a little bit about Salton Hall and, and what it is that you do. Hi. Uh, well, uh, there's a farm here, wedding venue, restaurant normally, but obviously we've been talking about the lockdown, so that's not operating at the moment, um, and accommodation and also we're locked down, so that's not working. But this summer we built um, like an emergency outdoor theatre that's had over a thousand people come to watch um, over 15 uh, performances. Uh, and then we've been building a barrow here, which I think some of your listeners will know about for the last five years. It's like a Stone Age inspired Stonehenge type monument. So, so you've already done things to kind of adapt during these difficult times so that you can still have events running and still have things on the go. Yeah, I think uh, just uh, to make sure, I mean, there's a bit of infrastructure here so we can gather people here safely and buildings that weddings will often happen in over 300 people can be in normally, but obviously that's completely out of the question for the time being, but um, you can reimagine how those work and that's, we were due to do an art exhibition that people would have been allowed to come to in person and hopefully they will be able to the other side of a lockdown um, but uh, the farm has been working here with uh, at least nine artists for the last 10 years, and we've never had an exhibition to show off their work. So during the summer, we put this exhibition together, thinking that we would give these guys a chance to show their work and maybe um, sell a few of their paintings and things, um, in expecting that we might have ended up with another lockdown and actually thinking it's probably quite important to give people something positive that's going on even if we are locked down to sort of celebrate local art and creativity so that was due to start on uh, when uh, on, on at the weekend that we've, we've just had uh, and we're going to move it online until people can come in person just pu- putting it on pause temporarily that's a, at least it can still happen at some point i mean what kind of other well, events it's happening digitally so we'll be tweeting out a, like a thread of the, of the work over the next bit and there will be a video tour of the exhibition but um, the other side of the lockdown, even if that's in January, we're expecting to open that up so people can have something to come and enjoy that's local and creative. Wonderful. What other events have you got coming up then? Well, I think you want to talk to Deborah in a second about something that we've been working on towards Christmas as a community event, really, and then coming into the new year um, the timetabling. We've got to do it with the National Youth Theatre. We're back with... Uh, another play in March um, of Animal Farm, and then I think there's about 12 types of play on the on the cards. But timetabling at the moment is a uh, responsibility that has fallen behind my farming, I'm afraid. Last couple of weeks, but no, I, um, totally understandable. But at least there's things that are in the distance that are exciting things coming up, including then um, this the Christmas Carol. So Deborah, tell us a little bit about this. What have you got planned for the Christmas Carol then? Yes, well, we we originally thought about something to do with Christmas and carols, but we've we've slightly changed that plan. And our plan is to build on everything that Tim has learnt with the National Youth Theatre at Salton Hall um, and put on a contemporary retelling play of the Nativity story using all the space um, that Salton Hall offers. So we're hoping to put on a community event which will be um, led by members of the community and involve local actors and musicians um, and uh, yeah so that children and families uh, will be able to attend and celebrate Christmas um, and we're very aware that for a lot of people they'd go to the pantomime or they'd have special treats and so this seems like a really good alternative way of celebrating together um, something very special. Oh, that sounds fantastic and uh, spreading a little bit of joy as well. Has it been quite a logistically difficult thing to to kind of start planning? It's quite challenging. Um, Fortunately, as I say, we've been able to build on everything the National Youth Theatre have done at Salton Hall. So they've shared their risk assessment and so forth. Um, And we've been looking at the outdoor space. I'm still very much in need of actors and people who will be willing to give their time for free to this project um, and who are happy to act in a muddy field, whatever the weather, on the 19th of December. Um, And maybe uh, musicians, we have one or two 
um, sort of small groups of musicians volunteer their time and, and to be part of the event. So we're looking for musicians and performers. So it, it's logistically challenging, but it would be much worse um, had the National Youth Theatre not been so generous with their learning um, and had Tim not been so generous with his learning and understanding of the outdoor space. This is due to be uh, quite interactive as well, isn't it? How are the, how are the audience going to participate and be involved with this? Well, we're hoping that we'll be able to use the audience sort of as part of the story. So so the audience will sort of walk uh, across the uh, the farm uh, and um, they, they will be part of the story as the story of the nativity unfolds um, and we walk along together. So obviously observing social distance and keeping people from being in a very crowded space, even outdoors. So, yeah, so we're hoping it'll be fun and engaging uh, for, for all those who attend, particularly for the children. So, Deborah, how is how is this Christmas season going to be a different different for you this year? Well, it's hard to tell. I mean, usually I'm I'm in church a lot over Christmas, um, and we don't know how much we will be in church. Certainly, for many people uh, who are older, they they will choose to stay away uh, from from any crowded situation. So, we'll probably be in terms of church looking at putting many of our services and things online um, and using social media. And um, yes, it's it's challenging times for everybody, but I think it's also an opportunity for us to look at what we do and do it differently. And um, certainly we're finding with our ordinary services, we're appealing to a different sort of congregation, maybe people who wouldn't come into our buildings, but find it easier to find us on Facebook or um, YouTube. So do you maybe think that down the line when, you know, when things are back to normal then, that during a following festive period that you might combine the things you would usually do along with some of the, the different the different things that you've had to do during this year to try and to, to get to more people and to, and to be, I suppose, more versatile? Yes, definitely. I mean, I think I think that this has made many people in many different sectors much more agile in the way we deliver what we normally do, in the way we invite people to join in with us. And I see that that's certainly the case for church. Um, and there are many things to be gained. And this opportunity to, to have an outdoor nativity, which normally we probably wouldn't have time to put together, um, you know, it's a joy that we're able to do that and work with people um who are from outside church, some of them, uh, you know, who are musicians and actors and performers. It, you know, it's, it's just great, really. And we're bringing community together in, in a completely different way um, with people joining in. So even the partnership between the churches and Tim, it, you know, it's a wonderful thing. I'll come back to you in just a few moments, Deborah, about how people can get involved with this. But Tim, this art exhibition then, what kind of art can we expect to see um, virtually for the moment? Well, it's a whole uh, different range of uh, of materials and approaches. So um, you've got Joe Holden, who's a local um, painter, landscape painter, um, but a bit of fantasy stuff within what she does as well. And Andrew Susick Peters, who uh, is a photographer, he's got um, a book out, uh, which is challenging time for him to launch a book, which would normally be in the stores ahead of Christmas. But um, I wanted to highlight that. He's done astrophotography and wildlife photography here for about five years, and then there's some stained glass by Harriet Love and Annette Jackson, and there's some stone carving by Paul Andrew Jones, more landscape photography by Paul Turner, and then some light painting by a collective called Enchanted Light. So, and then some ceramics actually using clay off the farm by a guy called Graham Taylor. So it's quite a range of media, yeah. but all of the all of the work has so they can exhibit what they. I mean, I've never curated an art exhibition before. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and what what we did was we had some fairly simple rules, like maximum six pieces from uh, any uh, contributor. At least one of those had to relate to the farm where they'd been working anyway, all of them in more or less in, in different ways for the last um, five years or so. Um, and uh, there's also some poetry in there by a poet called Merlin Faulkner. So lots of different stuff and the stuff yeah. that unifies it. It just happens to have been done all on this farm in some way. Oh, it sounds fantastic. Um, where can we? Where will we be able to experience this virtually then? Until such time that we're, you know, able to actually come and, and see this work. So it'll, there's, there's an event section on the bottom of the saltonhall.co.uk website, uh, and then it's called the November exhibition. And then what? What I think we decided to do was share 
uh, on social media, Twitter and Facebook and things, one every day, like an advent calendar, and then at the end do a little um, video tour of the whole space because it's not just the art. The building it's in is often, you know, many people perhaps would have been in there for a wedding and things, but if you're not coming here for a wedding, you're unlikely to get into all of the spaces where this art is being shown. So that's kind of a cool thing that it's been opening up more of what's here for people to see the art. And then it obviously had a read, has a read across with the the theatre we've been doing and, and the community stuff that uh, Reverend Deborah was just talking to you about. I mean, you've, as much as I know it's difficult at the moment with um, things having to take place in a different way, the positive the positive light of looking at this is that people can experience this artwork visually, uh, virtually uh, online and get a taste for it. And then, you know, down the line, they'll be able to come and see it as well. So p- potentially this artwork's going to get to to be seen by far more people and potentially more than once as well. Well, true. I mean, I'm aware that Joe's two of Joe's paintings have all been sold out, already been oh, really? sold out of the exhibition. Yes. Um, so obviously it kind of sort of soft launch yesterday, but two of the paintings were, were bought uh, already. Um, there's some people looking at them digitally, and that's an important thing because many artists get their work by going to art fairs and selling things that way, and that's obviously a, a bit difficult at the moment. So, you know, they need to earn... So it's, it's nice to help them out. Yeah. Um, and I was sort of, with, with all that we've been doing here since the lockdown eased, and now we're back into a lockdown, we'll come out at some point, we were trying to set an example, hopefully, that others might look at. And I know Deborah was keen that other parishes, if they wanted to look at this type of model, we're more than happy to share the risk assessments and things that we've done. Obviously, we're in a, a lockdown now that lasts until um, uh, 2nd of December, and we're not entirely clear on how things land the other side. But um, I know that the Department for Culture looked closely at exactly what the NYT did here and are trying to find ways for communities to, to do things together safely. And, and what, what happened here, I know you, you have um, James Bond from your team reviewed um, the NYT play. It was very responsibly done and very safe. And if we manage to get to a point where numbers and things are appropriate, it's essentially like walking through a landscape and seeing bits of performance distance from you so it is very safe it's just like going for a walk down a high street where you're meters and meters away from people um so hopefully it'll be possible to do that and i know deborah was thinking about contingency plans with me actually earlier when we were teeing up to how we talked through this interview with you about whether you could do if, if it's not possible to do the performance whether we could look at other things with installations or whatever so there's something for people to to go and find but a lot of this is about underlining community and trying to make sure that people have something hopeful to look forward to yeah. and recognise that, that other people in the community care about them and want them to have an enjoyable Christmas if it can be done. Um, and we've got to keep trying to find a way of making things more positive rather than just hiding under the duvet and expecting it to get better if we don't put any effort in. If that makes no, defi- sense. Definitely. Thank you so much, Tim. And just coming back to you, Deborah, then. So we're talking about the Christmas Carol. Um, now, aside from actually just coming in and enjoying this, you've said, you mentioned before about the fact that you're looking for performers, you're looking for musicians who um, are quite happy to, they may need to bring their wellies along because it could be a bit muddy as well. How can they get involved with this if they're interested? Yeah, so we're, we're keen. We, we could do with a little bit of sponsorship. Um, we're keen to find actors and musicians. We've we've already had somebody write a script for us. Um, so it'd be lovely to bring together a team of people um, from, well, anybody that wants to join in, really. So they need to be prepared to be able to be outdoors uh, and, and certainly looking at the fields yesterday at Wellies will be a must, but you never know, we might get a dry period. Um, so they can, um, we'll be putting something on our church Facebook page, so that's Pew Churches. So I'm in Priest, Edsiston and Wixall, um, and they, people will be able to find us there and be able to get in touch that way, and it would be lovely to hear from people. We've already had quite a lot of people offer all sorts of unusual things uh, to help help us. Um, one of our aims is to make sure that some of the children who are in families where things have been particularly difficult because of lockdown, difficult financially, are given priority in terms of tickets. Uh, and so that's why we would be keen to um, see if we could find some sponsorship to enable some of those costs to be covered without the need to sell as many tickets so that we can make sure um, some of those children uh, do come and have a treat at Christmas and get out to see something unusual and beautiful that they can talk about for years to come. It's lovely to hear about this this sense of community and bringing people together at a time where it's been so hard to be together. So how can people find out more about the Christmas Carol if they think they may want to come along to this? 
Yes, so that will um, that will be advertised on Sultan Hall's website, um, and there will be um, tickets will be available in due course, um, and all tickets will need to be brought online, purchased online, because there'll be certain things we'll need to do in terms of uh, COVID compliance and restrictions. So they'll be available online. I would think at the beginning of December. Brilliant. Thank you so much. That's Tim Ashton from Sultan Hall and Reverend Deborah Walton um, talking about a couple of events that may interest you. So you've got the um, the art exhibition and also Christmas Carol as well. So have a look for Sultan Hall online if you want to find out more about those. Um, and if you fancy getting involved in performing as well, if you've got some wellies and potentially some thermals may want to wrap up warm for this but fantastic to have something to look forward to and get involved with too we've just been talking about things that could be a little bit cool a little bit cold perhaps this will warm you up because this is such a summery sounding song it's gary barlow michael buble and sebastian yatra it's elita on bbc radio shropshire <laughs> 